The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. This is Basil Chapman. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour. It's not the noon time. It's not 12.06 in the Eastern time in the afternoon. It is, in fact, 8.06 in the morning. I'm doing the show earlier. It'll be recorded and played back at noon. So we're looking at the Dow having a spectacular run from 25,743 Thursday morning early. Closing up at 26,573. Um, really a spectacular move. 1,000 points in two days. Of course, on the way down, it did uh, something uh, within three days. It had a move from the 27,000 to the 25,743 level. Not the point. The point is that there was a rally on Friday. Now, I'm not sure if it was just a short squeeze, but it was really a double of the noontime price. And that, to me, it says that there was buying as well as uh, short covering. So what happens in the next few days is going to be really important. Why? Because if you're looking at the Dow right now, let's go to the um, futures. It's the YM trade is trading at uh, minus 52 at 26,474, having hit the 20, uh, 26,000, uh, let's see, 26,000, what was the high in the futures? 26,549 level. So it's down a little bit. But hey, what's really important here is that the MACD, the moving average convergence on this left side chart, is still very, uh, I wouldn't say very negative because it's flattened out, but the distance, distance between the slow moving average, the red 26 period exponential moving average, and the nine period differential, I call it the fast moving average, the green line, is very wide. And the histogram is only starting to improve a little bit. So there's still a lot of um, negative weight in this particular index. And the stochastic did turn around very nicely from under 20% to 29%. That's a good sign. On balance volume, the blue line right there has been holding very nicely. Look at the weekly chart, just stuck in a range, really between the mid 27,000s and this particular point. I'm going to go to the rising trend line support. And this week, that trend line support comes in at 25,500. So, what are we looking at? We're looking at a market that is holding extremely well, considering that there's a lot of overhang. There's a lot of stuff going on that could become very negative. It could also become very positive if there's suddenly a, at least a little bit of good news coming out of China this week over the next couple of days with the talks going on. So let's just do nitty gritties and just say, this is what I'm looking at. If there is another move to the upside and the Dow, let me go to the let me go to the index itself. The Dow, here we go. Dow Jones Industrial Average closes at twenty six thousand five seventy three. If there is a close above the fourteen period exponential moving average of twenty six thousand six hundred fifty eight, let's call it. Let's just say it can get to the twenty six thousand six seventies. Close above. 26,660, push into the 26,670s over the next couple of days. That would be very impressive action in the sense that what, you, what you've got here is a rising series of lows, even though there's slightly lower highs. And that says that the trading range could continue a little while longer and that until the Dow breaks underneath 25,000. If it's going to do that, that'll be a very big negative. In the meantime, it's a consolidation. That's what I've said to my subscribers to my opening call, a consolidation. We are short. We're short from like just about 120 points of the all-time high. Um, we've got a little bit of leeway. And that's the way it's the only short we have right now. We took the profits in our semiconductor short. Now, what's really interesting here is that there are a number of stocks that had very good candles on Friday. That's not good enough. A good enough candle would be to say, hey, very nice turnaround, 
Now we've got to follow through for the next three, four days. All right, let's do one thing at a time. So the resistance we can see here in the Dow's in the 26,660 area. And the key support is at this particular point, let me go to the 120 minute chart right here. 120 minute chart says that the green, uh, this is the thick green line, light green, 20 period experiential moving areas right there is at about 26,450. That's key support today. The next is the uh, black and pink 14 and 9 period exponential moving average. Let's go all the way down to 26,400. Now, what's very important is this. Within the context of the different indices, we had, we had something very interesting happen on Friday. I need to first look at the patterns. I wanted to show you that in the Chapman methodology, we're looking at very simple patterns. We like to identify the lowest low. We want to count from the lowest identifiable low. You start your count, and you want to see four, at least four peaks higher, alphabetize them, A, B, C, D on the way up. And when it gets to the fourth highest peak, even though you can go E, F, and G, at D is where other things can happen. So we saw 27,398 on the 16th of July, peak D, plummets down to a trough E at 25,339 from 27,398, runs all the way back to 27,306, just 92 points from the all-time high. Then it pulls back to 25,748. Think of that as an inside candle, just one big inside candle. We didn't break out to the upside. We haven't broken down to the downside. So you've got your four peaks. But what are we always looking at? We're looking at cup formations and arch formations. And the day, look at this beautiful cup formation, look at this beautiful arch formation. Red, because if it takes out the left side lower, it can go lower. Green, if it takes out the left side high, it can go higher. And sometimes you can get a mix called the lowercase h or an inver a reverse y. All right, enough of that. Let's get out of that. Here we go. Now, where are we in the different indices? And as I said, Friday was an interesting session. Look at this big candle going all the way to the nine period moving average in the Dow on Friday. Look at the S&P, huge move up. And it goes uh, from 28.55, round number low. Oh, was that round number low in the, in the cash index as well? No, it wasn't, 55.94, that was in the uh, futures. So there we go. 0.94, and it goes all the way from 28.55 to uh, 29.53 on Friday, and it stops a little higher. It goes to the 14-period exponential moving average. The MACD is still flat and stochastic did turn up, uh, but it's only at 22%. Interesting, the price was a little bit better, but the technicals didn't uh, confirm, conform the way they should. The QQQ, the NDX 100, trading at 188.48 right now, down 33 cents, had a big move. It closed over the 14-period moving average. The MACD is a little bit better. The histogram's improving somewhat, and stochastic's actually at 25%, and it barely went under 20%, maybe for intraday, but that's it. Technically, it's holding well, and you can see this lowercase h. Remember, we're looking at that h pattern. So far, this h pattern is holding very nicely in the weekly chart, but it did take out on the uh, intraday, intraweek basis, it did take out this rising dash trend line, and now we've got to watch it closely. The resistance is at 189 to 190.30. The IWM will come right back to that as soon as we return. Had a big rally, but not good enough. And it's, it's really the laggard. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Traditions Hour, Monday, the 7th of um, October at 8.14 a.m., not noon. This is an early show. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner.
Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we're back, Basil Chapman. This is an early edition of the Tiger Technicians Hour, usually at noon, but right now it's 8.18 in the morning, and the futures are actually trying to rally. The Dow's only down 40. It was down 140 overnight. Now it's down just 40, and the S&P is down 5 uh, the E-mini, that is. Uh, the IWM, as I said, nice rally, very nice rally, but not good enough. Didn't even get into halfway into that very ugly candle of last week. I think that was uh, with, uh, Monday, Friday, Monday, to Tuesday. So uh, we got to watch it closely. You can see on the, in the middle chart, the weekly chart, it is just stuck in a rectangle formation. It's trading between 160 and 143. Takes out 143, then 142, 45 uh, orange 200 period exponential moving average in the weekly chart becomes very important. Monthly chart doesn't look too great right now. So let's go on and we'll look at the gold. Gold at this particular moment is down eight at 15.04. I uh, also stuck in a range, this rectangle range, although it's gone way above it and then way below it, the, the median price, let's call it median price, is between 15.25 and 14, I think that's about 14.96. And it's just stuck in the middle. It's at 15.04 right now. And silver's the same thing. Silver's acting a little bit poorly here. It's down 0 0.08 at 17.54. It is under the nine period, the pink nine period exponential moving average. And now let me just extend this rectangle formation to say that was support. Let's see if it can remain a support if at any point this week, uh, 17, let's call it 16.94 is taken out. Uh, that would say a good chance it's going to head towards the 16.42 orange 200 period moving average in the daily. But if we can push into the 17.95 area, that'll say, hey, now it can go a little bit higher, but it really is stuck in the range. If you look at high-grade copper, also acting quite, today it's acting a little bit better, but it's stuck in the range as well, but it's under the nine-period moving average, the pink and the 14 period moving average, the black line. Uh, it's really just stuck. The MACD is weak and the stochastic is trying to rally, but the price hasn't rallied commensurately. So 2.56, as I say, it's just stuck in a range. Now, this is going to be very important because the crude oil, 
Crude oil is rallying today. It's up 70 cents at 53.62. It double bottom from the 50.52 low. This is a continuous contract from the low that was made on the 7th of August at 50. Point, uh, was that 23 or 52? 50.23, I should have changed that. It went under it. Uh, okay, I'm having a little issue there. Okay, there it is. 15.23. I like to get these right. 23. And then the low three days ago was right there. 50.99. So, so far, it's a successful arch pattern. It's actually an inverted H. 50.99. And uh, holding quite nicely, having a little bit of a rally. But look at the weekly chart. Just like I'd say that the lowercase h could go to a lowercase m. And as long as it holds above 50, that's good. If it starts to trade in 49, 48 area, it breaks key support. So, so far, it's trying to hold tight. Now, let's go to the dollar. The dollar trading at this particular point, if I can get into the right area, there it is. The dollar is up three ticks at 98.86. It is holding well, considering that it's had a very good move. If you look at the monthly chart, look at this 88.25 April, uh, February of 2018. Over a year and a half later, it's trading. At 98.86, having hit 99.46, my target has been uh, the 100, the par level. It hasn't got there; it just missed it. But there's good evidence that it should get there. Now, in the interim period, you've got a leg D in the weekly chart. If this becomes a peak D, remember what I said: at peak D, other things can happen. Look at 97.71, uh, the week of December the 14th of 2018, peak D. Drops down to 95.02 uh, in November. How can that be? In January, I'm sorry, in January. And then rallies to a peak E at 98.37, pulls back to 95.48, and now goes to yet another leg D. And this is probably going to be a peak D if there's no 99.62, if there's no high above that this week. And that says you could start to get another digestive phase. You've got China coming on here. Maybe they do something that impacts the dollar in some way. The, the, the uh, administration would probably like a weaker dollar, but this dollar has just been, I think it represents, I always talk about it as the Harley Davidson. Now, there was not the company Harley Davidson, just the icon, American icon, the dollar. And that's really what it is. It represents the economy as being very strong right now. Um, and I think that's what, you, that's what you're looking at. OK, so that's the uh, dollar. If you look at the EUR, USD, let's just do this because this is the beginning of the week. We want to be fresh. There has been a turn up in the euro. Uh, it, it went to a trough 1.08. 1, 1 1.08. 792, <laughs> those numbers. Um, it's trying to rally, just a minor little rally here. It's trading up a fraction today. You already need to see this over 1.105 in the next couple of days. And that'll say dollar's going to have a bit of a breather. Euro's going to have its turn to rally. It's said that many times. It really hasn't shown tremendous uh, strength at all, other than just a bounce. If you look at the USD JPY, that's the this is the yen US, this is the dollar yen currency pair 106.84 uh, it's trying to rally here the technicals are weak it needs to get it better hold 106.30 um, otherwise it's going lower but if it's able to rally to 107 107.80 by tuesday or wednesday that's going to be very good <laughs> that's a lot to be a point it's going, to, it's going to take a lot to do that. I think I've covered almost everything I wanted except the TLT. This is very important. The TLT is down 75 cents today at 145.24. In a sense, that's going to give some strength to the market because as money, when the market is very shaky and very volatile, meaning going down, uh, money flows from out, migrates from stocks into bonds, so-called safety of bonds, and vice versa. So going down 75 cents in this very strong leg from 136 to 146, uh, you can have a bit of a digestive phase. But that weekly chart is suggesting that if there is a turn down under 143.20 in the next two, three days, you could have a bigger rally in the market 
and a pullback in the bonds in the weekly chart, making an H pattern or inverted V right there. So I'm watching this closely. The monthly chart still says it should go to a leg D above 148.90 at some point. That would intimate that there should be lower yields. But in the meantime, we're going to be watching this today very closely. Now, I've covered a whole bunch of things. I want you to just do the XLF. The XLF, which is the financials, had a very strong session, filled in the gap from last week. It's trading at 26 40 right now, down six cents, close at 27.46. Stuck in a range, making higher lows and not really higher highs, but it is testing the 28 area quite often. So what happens this week is going to be very important because if the financials start to take out 26.20 key support, $1.20 from here, that's very negative. And that to me would be a sign of Probably greater economic weakness. Uh, talking about economic weakness, look at Syntas. This is what I use as a benchmark for the economy. Um, overalls, uniforms, rentals, CTAS, trading at uh, 265.59 up 273 today. Um, that's even better than the uh, Friday close. That's just saying things are quite steady. It might be rotational weakness, like in some of the uh, hotels and resorts. But so far, this is a thing that I've been like Basil Chapman Tiger finishes out. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, we're back. So talking about those patterns, remember I was saying uh, there's a pattern. Let me just draw this. Uh, I bring it across. There it is. There's the Y pattern. If you take out the, the upper uh, peak, it can be quite positive. That's why it's green. It's like a reverse Y. 
And that can turn into like the lowercase h can turn into a lowercase m by having another arch. So the y can turn into a double u formation. Well, look, here it is. The E mini two minute chart right there runs up to this PG slash C, has a one, two, three, four, five quintuple top. Pulls back after an arch from after a cup formation, makes a deeper cup formation, just fails. Uh, it gets to 2946-ish uh, and doesn't take out the high of 2946.75, and uh, then pulls back. So th these patterns are remember straight line, cup or arch. Just keep thinking of those. Why do I say arch? Look at this. You had your arch right there. One, left side, right side. Having another one, left side, and now we'll see if it makes takes a, out the left side low, and that's all you need to think of. It just makes it makes not necessarily trading, but it makes the visualization of patterns so much easier. Straight line move, look, straight line move, straight up, and then cup formation, arch formation, cup formation, arch formation, and let's see what happens after that. All right, so now what we're looking at is within the context of Sintas, it's holding very well on a weekly basis, but it, if it closes over this one, two, three, triple top of 270, how do stocks do this? On the 20th of August, it goes to 270.36. It pulls back pretty sharply to 255 area and then runs up to 270.24 on the 5th of, of uh, 5th of September, 15 days later, well, uh, not that many sessions later. Then it goes all the way down to round number 244 on the 16th of September, rallies all the way back. But what does it do? The previous double top was 12 cents off the all-time high. This one goes to 270.11, 13 cents off the all-time high. Now you can see in the weekly chart, and why do I make a big deal about this? I've always treated it as a kind of a, a benchmark of what's going in certain sectors of the economy. Uh, in this case, overalls, rentals, uniform rentals. And that really implies that so far everything's holding very well, but there has been just a rotational correction that says that maybe you should look at something like an MAR, which is a Marriott. And there's Marriott. Look at this. It makes an all-time high of 149.21 January of 2018. Careens down to 101 um, late de uh, December. Powers up to 144, and that's in July. And now it's trading at 120.86 at the low range. Um, so this is saying to me, yeah, maybe maybe this is telling us about some of these different areas. Look, H is uh, Hyatt. Is that Hyatt? Yep. Hyatt Hotels makes an all-time high back in uh, June or July at 85. Or was it just under 84.89? That was in June of 2018. Careens down to the 64s, rallies up to the 81s. And now it's training at 72, taking a bit of a breather, I'd say. And let's go to Hilton. I think Hilton's HLT. Hilton is, now this is one that's held much, much, oh, why have I not got the notation? It made an all-time high back at 104.14 in July of 2019. Pulls back to 19, 20 points. You know, it's, um, it's, it's a big deal, but it's not as big deal as the others. And holding quite well. So this rotational correction going on in the uh, in the in the hotel area, I think that's really um, showing up in the price of Sintas. Uh, if you look at the IYT, which is the, the uh, transportation index, I'm a little concerned that at 209.44, the July high, uh, plummeting down to really important monthly. Look at this trend line. This trend line really goes back a while. Uh, you can see that it goes back to the low of 2009 at 38.29. It rallies to 209.44. I would say that that's a bit of a rally. iShares Dow Jones Transportation Index pulls back to 155. That's 60 points. Uh, that's um, 30, 28%, 27%. And now it's making this arch formation at 180. It needs very quickly to get to the 185. Why? I like to see 
the transport's confirming rallies. I, I, I don't use Dow theory. I just think on a practical, a pragmatic way of looking at it is to say, hey, you want to see shipping. You want to see the rails doing well. And the airlines, it's a little bit differently. They, they are tied perhaps a little bit more to crude oil. But the XAL... The airline, ARCA airline index has made a high of 124 back in uh, 2018, pulls back to 86, and it's now trading at 98. It's kind of stuck. And considering that oil is in the lower range, it should be higher than that. So these are things that I, I, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm worrying about, but I put them in the, in the percolator to say, just let's watch them, see how they, see how they perk. All right. The other thing is this. Uh, when we are looking at interest rates, TNX.X, this is the 10-year. This 10-year had a spectacular, what I call a single leg A up from 14.29 at 1.429%. I should have typed that in uh, to the high of the 13th. So that was back in August, late August. Then on the 13th of September, it hits 19.03. 19.03, huh, 1.903. And that was 9, what did I say, 13th, I think I said 13th. Um, and then it pulls back to 15.34. This is a pattern that I call the single leg A to the upside. If it pulls back and it takes out more than about three quarters of the gain, it's there right now, that usually tests the low. So I'm going to be watching this very closely. And that would say that bonds rally when the price of the yields comes down. So if there is a move up, towards the 16.02, 16.28, and move, moving averages right there, TLT should be pulling back. So we're going to be watching that very closely. Even, even more important is um, looking at the, here we are, the weekly chart, it, it pulled back to a trough D, had a very nice rally. It's now under, also underneath the key moving average, and the monthly chart really doesn't look very good at all. It looks like it's going to have to be testing of the lows. Okay, so now a couple of things are going on. We've had an 8.30 report, I'm sure somewhere or other. The uh, E-mini is down 52 in the in the Dow, down 7 in the E, uh, sorry, the E-mini is down 7, the Dow uh, YM futures is trading down 53. Okay, here we are. A couple of questions I had the other day was, in looking at the markets, what was the reason for you to go short? And what would change your mind? So to do this, I'll do this in a, in a, in a broader way. I and you, I'll show you the charts. In the broadest sense, that peak E that was made in the weekly chart right here, at 27,398, that was uh, the 16th of July was the high. It pulled back and it created a trend line. That trend line was hit exactly. So 24,701 in June, 25,339 was the low in July. And look what happened here. 25,743 was the low of last week on Thursday morning. And now look how it's rallied. I'll talk more about it when we get back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Editions Hour, early edition, 8.38 in the morning rather than noon, 12.38 in the afternoon. Being recorded and will be replayed. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So there's another expression I have. A rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. Look at this rectangle. The, the cup formation made another cup formation, and yet the 29.46 level and the two-minute E-mini chart is holding very nicely. I would just put it this way. If the E-mini starts to trade underneath 29.39 and holds there for more than, I would say, 40 minutes, there's a real good chance that there's going to be weakness for a good part of the day. If there is a break into the 2948 level, I think that there's going to be forced buying and short covering. Uh, so those are the levels to be watching. So let's go back here. And I was talking about the Dow. Reason why we've been short, <coughs> excuse me, fortunately, using the Chapman Wave methodology, we've been able to short either the exact day of the tops of the last couple of quite quite since April actually, and uh, this one we didn't short at the top, but we did get a short about 120 points from the all-time high, from the, the recent high of 27,306, and uh, it did drop to 25,007. 43, and now there's a, a bounce. And I think this is a consolidation. I'm calling it a consolidation, not talking about a bear market or anything. Not at this point. That weekly chart is still okay. But look at the monthly chart in the Dow. It's holding very well. And we did go to the nine, to the 14, the black line, the 14 period moving average, and we bounced off it. So I would just say that at this particular time, 26,200 is the support that needs to hold in the monthly chart, if it takes that out, it'll retest at 25,873. One penny above 27,398 will start a leg D. And I do expect at least a leg D in this particular move. My thinking has been that there will be a consolidation first before we do that. And that kind of corresponds. Look at the S&P. How on earth can you have, since the low of December, December 26th, how can you go from 23,000 to 23,46 all the way to 3,027 in a single leg A and not have at least a couple of months? We've had two months. I'm expecting at least a third month of consolidation. Maybe it's the fourth month. Uh, November, we start to break into new highs. We'll see. But most importantly, uh, that for a single leg A to the upside is spectacular. 2346 to 3027 in the E-mini, fabulous. Um, okay, so the other thing is the QQQ. If you look at the, um, the Qs themselves, 
Yes, the monthly is holding well, and yes, the weekly is holding okay. It's not great. It's already broken and sitting close to the trend line support. And the the month, sorry, the daily chart is making these H's. They look a cup formation and an arch formation. There was a lowercase H that went to a lowercase M and made a bigger arch formation with a higher low at 181.82, trading at 188.44 right now. So I think here as well, there's a consolidation going on. Even more importantly, if you look at the Amazon, if you look at the FANG stocks, look, Amazon, yeah, it had a nice little bounce on Friday. It doesn't look very good. It looks like it's got a big digestive phase going on. It's got to form a base in the, in the 1680 area to to 1700 and really start to move into the 1800s and must do that soon. If you look at Facebook, Facebook trading at uh, 180, uh, way off the 208 high, last high, but the 218 high of July of 2018. It is way below that right now. So also a nice couple of days, but not great. And it looks to me like it needs more digestive. Look at Goog, uh, Alphabet trading a little bit better, but still stuck in a range, trading at 12.09, 12.07 right now, down to pre-market. So I'm looking at this Netflix. Netflix has really been hammered. It was one of the darlings going up to the 423 high of June. Then it makes a huge in the monthly. Look at this H pattern right here. And if it takes out 250 support, it could retest the low all the way back down to 231. So it needs very quickly to get to the at 272. It needs to get to 305 to say, hey, hey, I'm done going down. I need at least sideways to up. What am I missing? Oh, Apple. Apple was fabulous. Apple is trading at 226, almost all-time high. Did an all-time high just three, four days ago. I'm sorry, 233.47 was the all-time high in October, plummeted to 142, and now it got almost back. It went to 200, so 233 is the all-time high, and the high on Wednesday, Thursday of last week on the 1st of October was uh, 228.32, five points off the high. So Apple is really the strongest of all, but Apple is the most mature company. It is really, um, how can I put this? It is, it is now a kind of a dividend play. It is uh, it is a service industry. It's really modulated. It's, it's morphed into something different to what it was. Yes, it has hardware and software, but now it really is service, and that's a big deal. It's a big change in culture. It's kind of what happened with Microsoft. I mean, Microsoft holding very nicely here, also in this kind of sideways pattern, all-time high. This is a stock that was a, a leader in 2000, and then just crashed, and now is a leader overall. It's just, it's remade itself. Uh, that is incredible action. So Microsoft. So yeah, individual stocks we can look at. Look at the, I wanted to show you something in the IBB. The IBB, I don't think I've updated it yet. No, I haven't updated it lately, but it went from 122.97 high in December of 2018, goes down to the 89 area, springs back to 116, and now it's down in the doldrums at 99. Yes, it's trying to rally, but this is, see, this is probably an area in the politics of today where... <laughs> It's tough. It's really tough. Yes, you've got in the actual drug, this is the NASDAQ biotech, in the uh, pharmaceutical area, you've got a Merck holding the all-time high, made a peak C. It looks like it will go to a D. So it's really very individual. And within a sector, you can get some stocks that are just acting very poorly. And Merck, a big pharmaceutical almost at the highs, it's at 85 right now. All-time high was right there. Triple top goes 87.07 in July, 87.35 in August, and 87.17 in uh, September. I would normally say this is a Chapman Wave two-bar reversal, uh, and it did certainly pull back sharply to the 14-period moving average in the 78 area, but this is very good action. So I think it's very important to be very selective and look at what is working? Look at the XLK. The XLK right here is uh, at 80.55. 82.78 was the high in July, dropped to 75, runs up to 81, and then comes back down again. There's the cup formation. Here's the arch formation. Remember, just make it as simple as possible. It goes to peak E, rallies, and now it's trying again to make a bit of a cup formation. Can it do that? This is going to be very important because if the S&P select financial, uh, select 
the tech spider fund is able to um, get into the 81.30 area, uh, it's getting closer and closer to the all-time high. This is just a, a sideways correction. This is just a, a digestive phase. So I'm watching this. Very, It's very important. And the reason why I took the profit for as a subscriber is, yes, we're going to lower our stop in there. We were out the short, so I can get rid of this. We're not short anymore. We might even do it again if there's a failure today. I just don't know because if it's acting well, and look at Taiwan Semiconductor. I spoke about it with subscribers to my opening call this morning. Hey, almost an all-time high. And it's getting um, a lot of billing. It's getting everything is working for it. Not many of the others in the area are getting that kind of uh, action. Taiwan Semiconductor, TSM trading at 47.69 up 27 cents pre-market the high the other day was 47.85 nice action i'll be right back basil chapman we'll wrap it up I'm in a certain few minutes you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life it's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share if you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done which is how to time the markets i'm steve rhodes author of mastering probability and for the last 12 months timer digest has been tracking my newsletter signals which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the s p 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So as we uh, wrap up, this is the uh, this is at 8:54 a.m. in the morning instead of uh, five minutes to one o'clock for my usual show. The Tiger Nation's out. Let me explain what I'm looking at. The Dow hey, has folks, given this me is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge. Oh. Uh, the, the Dow has given me a sell signal, and um, I'm looking at the chance of. A, an arch formation forming right here 
and we will know that it's in place if the Dow starts to break under 26,000, close under 26,380 at any point this week, and then it will be a do a retest because if it gets into the skinny wick of 26,250 at any stage, it should go down to the bottom. On the upside, I don't want to ignore that because there are buyers out there. You saw that on Friday, maybe short covering, but we'll just say that a close above 26,720 says, yep, we could go a little higher. But at this particular point, I think the high that was made on the 12th of September, 27,306, is in place for a digestive phase, a consolidation phase, not looking at a bear market or anything like that right now. I'm just saying digestive phase. So keep that in mind. And we'll watch the TLT, because if the TLT starts to see a move, it's down 81 cents. Instead of being at 145.19, within two days, if it's starting to trade at 146.70 or 147.20, something in that area, Area, means probably the money's going to be going back into bond, going into bonds as a safety measure because of the volatility of stocks. Just be a little careful, selective. That's what I'm saying right now. Yes, there are stocks. We've, we added two positions on Friday. Um, we're giving them tight stops. Not going to be, I'm not prepared to take any chances here. It either works right away or it doesn't work. We'll see what happens. So I'm about to wrap it up. You're going to go to you're going to go to uh, Larry Pizzavento, uh, trade what you see coming up straight after this. Uh, if you're listening to, at noontime with a recorder show, it'll be Steve Rhodes and Dave White and Tom O'Brien. So I'm going to uh, try to beat the instead of talking into the clock right now. Let me see what we've got for time. Yep, we're doing okay. So this is going to be a wrap and we're looking at uh, watch the market closely. Oh, it didn't do the VIX as we were about to wrap up. Let's do the VIX quickly. The VIX right now, VIX dot X. I think I missed it. Okay, the VIX red right now is trading at 18. If it goes to 18.80, this market goes even low or higher. And if it starts to go to 17.80, this will be a good thing for the market intraday. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow at my regular time.